In what many consider to be the greatest game in college football history, the Texas Longhorns and the USC Trojans faced off to decide not only the 2006 Rose Bowl champion, but the college football national champion. A true clash of titans, and also one that would change college football forever. Now, I've loved college football from a very young age, but in no way do I consider myself a USC or Texas fan. Yet, 10-year-old me at the time needed to record this game because I wasn't going to be able to watch it live. So I had my mom buy a couple VHS tapes and take them to my uncle's house to record the game because we lived with my grandma and we didn't trust her with the task. Little did I know I would capture one of the most spectacular championship games of all time. Then again, this was one of the most anticipated championship games ever. A game between two teams that were one and two all year long. True juggernauts on both sides. USC came into the game with a 34 game win streak, which would have been 46 if it wasn't for a triple overtime loss to Cal back in 2003. They had Heisman Trophy winner Matt Leinard, who was an insane 37 and one as a starting quarterback heading into this game. And pair that with newly crowned Heisman winner Reggie Bush himself, and this team truly looked unstoppable. But what made this game so good was Texas was a super team in and of itself. Coming off a 19 game winning streak of their own and being reigning Rose Bowl champs, if anyone was gonna give USC a run for the money, it was going to be Texas. And they would only go as far as Vince Young's arm and legs would take them. The unanimous runner up to the Heisman that year and the Big 12 player of the year. Young could do it all and then some. Now, as we all know, a couple weeks earlier, he finished second in the Heisman race to Reggie Bush. And it's hard to argue against Reggie winning, but to say Vince Young had a chip on his shoulder would be a massive understatement. No doubt he was ready for this matchup. Now, this game started out fast, a quick three and out by USC, but then a massive fumbled punt return by Aaron Ross, giving USC great field position and Matt was off. A drive that led to an easy four yard touchdown from Lendale White, who was only getting started that night. Now, most of the rest of the first quarter was a defensive battle, but on the second play of the second quarter, a pivotal play happened that would have fans talking for years to come. He's a very fast guy, and sometimes he goes deep. They drop it off, got a little screen action set up for Bush. Oh, look out! Ball fumble! Texas has got it! Now, obviously a boneheaded play by Reggie here, but many don't know that he had rehearsed this leading up to the game. Trojan receiver Chris McFoy was known for blocking downfield and was excellent at clearing the way for Bush on his long runs. Bush and McFoy would practice similar plays where he would lateral to McFoy leading up to the Rose Bowl game. He was quoted in the LA Times saying, we did it a few times jokingly, but it was kind of like he always knew where I was. Only this time McFoy was on the sideline and Reggie lateral the ball to the other team. The turnover resulted in a made field goal by Texas kicker David Pino and the score was 7-3. Now USC would get the ball back and Matt Leinert would walk USC down the field to about the Texas 25 before an insane interception by Michael Griffin in the end zone, which marked the second turnover in the row for USC after a promising drive. And Young led the Longhorns right back down the field with both his arm and his legs before one of the most controversial plays in the whole entire Texas. night. Young's got it, gonna run it. Lost the ball. Pitched it out. He pitched it out. Touchdown, and Texas. Touchdown. However, upon further review, Vince's knee was clearly down before the lateral, but for whatever reason, the play was never reviewed. It was later revealed that this might have been due to technical issues. A little suspect in my opinion. However, Texas ran up to the line to kick the extra point, and as the old adage goes, ball don't lie, they missed the extra point, but it still put Texas ahead 9-7. And the Texas defense would hold up the Trojans and force a punt on the next drive. And after a poor punt, the Longhorns were in perfect position at midfield, and they took full advantage of this field position, driving right Right down the field with contributions from a number of players capped by a 30 yard touchdown run by their running back Taylor. This time the extra point would be good and Texas would take a 16 to seven lead. And although USC had a number of promising drives, they found themselves falling behind due to blunders at less than ideal times. They needed a good drive right here to close out the half, which is exactly what happened as Liner throws a pass intended for Bush that was 
almost intercepted by Drew Kelson. But luckily for USC, Kelson didn't survive the ground and the Trojans avoid near disaster to end the half. And the drive continued down to the Longhorns 13 yard line before defensive tackle Frank Oakham single-handedly decides this drive is over, forces USC to settle for a field goal and the score is 16 to 10 heading into the locker room. And the first half finished with mostly a defensive battle, blunders and blown calls that favored both sides, mostly Texas, and a few long sustained drives. However, the stage was set for what would be one of the most thrilling 30 minutes of football the Rose Bowl has ever seen. Now, the Trojan defense came out strong to start the second half, forcing Texas to punt. Matt Liner and Lindell White were the dynamic duo on this drive, leading to Lindell White's second touchdown of the game with a three yard run. And USC would retake the lead 17 to 16, just like that. And Lindell White was a beast in this game. It wasn't the Heisman Trophy winner, it was the dynamic backup who would total three touchdowns before the night was over. Also, with that second touchdown, Reggie Bush and Lindell White would set the record for most touchdowns by a backfield duo in NCAA history. This was truly one of the best running back rooms college football has ever seen. Now, as I mentioned, Lindell White, the 230-pound bruiser, beat up the interior defense over and over again in this game, USC especially leaning on him in short-yarded situations. And not much was heard from Reggie, but sooner or later, you knew he was going to put his footprint on this game. Now, USC was back on top, but Young and the Longhorns waited wasted no time driving down the field to quickly retake the lead. Young would rush in for what would be his first of three touchdowns on the night. Texas leads 23-17. Now at this point, both offenses were uncorked and USC drove down the field and were now facing a fourth and one on the Texas 12 yard line. And head coach Pete Carroll decides to risk it and go for the first down. And the risk would pay off as Lindell White powered his way through the line, gained the first down and thought, hey, while I'm here, I might as well just take it into the end zone. It would be his 57th career touchdown and a USC record in just three seasons. Now the last drive of the quarter would be a promising one for Texas, mostly due to the brilliance of Young and his 45 yard run before the drive being stalled and their kicker Pino missing a field goal attempt. Everything would come down to an epic fourth quarter, 24-23 USC with the lead. Now Liner would continue his dominance in the fourth quarter, surgically passing his way down the field. And after a relatively quiet night, especially by Reggie Bush's standards, we saw vintage Bush with an acrobatic flip into the corner of the end zone. USC was clicking on all cylinders in the second half and took a commanding 31 to 23 lead. And with that score, Bush and White would solidify a record setting 99 touchdowns in their time at USC. And Texas would move the ball effectively and avoid near disaster on a would-be fumble by Jamal Charles that was ruled incomplete. And the drive would continue to the 17 of USC, but ultimately finish with a made field goal, making the score 31 to 26. USC would get the ball back and would not stop scoring. Liner was putting on a masterclass all game and this drive was no different. He connected with Dwayne Jarrett at the goal line who stretched the ball across the plane to give USC an even more commanding lead. 38-26. There was only 624 to play, but Texas was not going to go down without a fight. And Young literally put the team on his back, accounting for all 69 yards on the next drive, which ended with his rushing touchdown with about 358 to play and only being down by five points. But now the Trojans had the ball back and things weren't looking great for Texas. They hadn't stopped the USC offense from scoring the entire second half. They obviously needed a stop here if they had any shot of winning this game, which brings us to arguably the most pivotal play of the entire night. Texas calls timeout to stop the clock at 2.13. USC has the ball with fourth and two and decides to try and really put this game away by gaining the first down and be well on their way to running the clock out to another W and another national championship. And honestly, I can't say I blame them. Lindale White had been money for them in short yarded situations all game long. Why not lean on the guy who has been pounding a now tired defensive front for Texas? One first down and this game was over. The Texas defense had to dig deep for one play and they did it. The power back. He gets it. Gets it, meaning he got the ball. That official right there is marking the ball. And the Trojans have caught some flack for this for having their best player on the sideline for one of the most pivotal plays of the game. But the Texas defense was really built for the speed of Reggie Bush. White's bruising inside game was exactly what got them to that situation in the first place. So I really had no problem with it. But now what happens next? Well, I think we all know. Vince Young. 
that's what happened next. Vince Young would march Texas right back down the field and eventually be faced with a fourth and five. Do or die, 26 seconds left. Five, the national championship on the line right here. He's going for the corner. He's got it. Vince Young scores. And it almost seems like he didn't know what to do or he's just soaking in the moment. Everyone around him, including the mascot, is just completely losing their mind. Now, USC would have a shot at the end of the game to potentially get into field goal position and possibly force overtime. But time just wasn't on their side and an incomplete pass by Liner on the left side eventually ended the game. Young had accounted for 467 all-purpose yards, which stands as the best performance in a BCS championship game ever. Matt Leinart has 365 yards passing, while Reggie and Lindell combined for 206 yards rushing and four touchdowns. They really went toe-to-toe -to -toe in every aspect of the game, and it still could have gone either way, but I guess that's just what made this game so good. This win snapped USC's 34-game winning Street and ended one of the most dominant runs in college football history. Everything really seemed to have a storybook ending for the Longhorns, except for this guy, truly and completely botched the banner twirl. And it's really hard for me to feel bad for USC in this moment. They had already achieved basically everything there is to achieve in college football. And my favorite team has never even come close to what they've done in a four year span. And I can't help but think, hey, if I had one singular national championship, it would soothe my sports loving soul for a lifetime. 61 of the players featured in this game would eventually be drafted into the NFL. This was college football at its highest level and truly one of the greatest games ever played.